Assalamu alaikum ya Shaykh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, can you explain us a little bit about the salt, the power of it? Please, thank you for being patient with us. Salt is a cleansing. Salt takes away negative energies. <clears throat> Anytime we're trying to ground ourselves, then the use of salt, Prophet gave for us to sunnah to have salt before we eat. So you take a pinch of salt into the mouth that purifies the mouth of any negative energy. As a result of purifying from negative energy because what's about to happen? As soon as you eat that food will be mixed with the negative energy in the mouth and begin to attack the heart. So the, there's an energy on everything and this is not the energy of the food, these are the beings and creatures that are emanating upon everything and mainly negative creatures. As a result of that negativity when we put it into the mouth it affects the heart, the energy goes into the heart. Salt is a great purifier. And then also sunnah to keep the salt by your bed and that the first thing in the morning before you even open your eyes is to put a pinch of the salt in your mouth to cleanse the negative energy. Salt is also something that negative energies don't like. So they keep the salt by them and by having that salt it takes away the negative energy. The Himalayan rocks also take away that negativity. So by having the salt around them it's a cleansing from negative energies. That's why they make those lamps with the salt and they talk about these nice energies because they, they, they don't know that but the nefarious beings they don't like salt. They don't want to be around salt and it burns them. So as a result then there's an immense importance in salt around us from bad things, bad energy. You don't feel something good, you just put a little bit of salt in your mouth for a cleansing. You don't feel something good then you can throw some salt around, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Are there other ways we may be lowering our energy, known or unknown? Lowering? Lowering our energy. Our energy, yeah everything. Everything lowers our energy and then we become more one. Two negatives make you a plus, right? So when you have a negative energy and then you do sinful things you're becoming more arrogant. You're becoming more the one, less the humble one. So then everything is based on energies and when we're depleting our energy we're more likely to be attacked with negative actions. As a result we become more the one towards shaitan and not the nuh towards Allah right? They eat wrong, they start having wrong desires. It's in the food, it's in your fast food, it's in the people touching everything that you're eating. All their junub, all their dirtiness, all their thoughts are going into that food. If you're not making du'a, you're not putting salt upon the food and it's not something halal and not something clean and you're not doing what you're supposed to, imagine then the immense amount of negativities in the food. As soon as you eat it you have these bizarre desires. So everything is energy and the drink of people and what they put into their, their mouth is everything is energy. They go out and they drink spirits, spirits. They can't say, oh tell us that they didn't know. You say, no you were, you were eating and drinking creatures. And because their being is of that reality and then their nature. So everything for us is then an energy, everything is, is, has a purified energy. Anytime you're not feeling good drink a lot of water. There's an immense angelic reality in water and the water flushes the body, cleans the body. So alhamdulillah all, all of these teachings are based on energy. The one whom understands and, and begins to master the energy then they begin to master their reality. And they understand what energy is flowing, which is coming good, which is going bad. They don't go places where their energy will be taken from them. So you have to imagine it like a physical. Energy is like beautiful gold from Allah but you don't value it. But if you put it in material perspective, imagine energy the zikr, Allah put a thousand golden coins in everyone's pockets. Well then you would go home very worried, oh my god how are we going to get in the house, if we go on the road they're going to steal it from us, we're going to get robbed by the time we get home. When we feel what Allah is giving to us as something precious we would guard it. 
And we wouldn't just go somewhere and park somewhere and start interacting somewhere and knowing that everything will be stolen from us. And that's what happens in our lives, we just take these blessings and immediately begin to throw them out the window as we're driving home and yelling and arguing and fighting and, and disagreeing with everything that was taught. <laughs> uh, As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah What's the best way to tame an out of control ego? Best way to tame an out of control ego inshaAllah this associations. Mm -hmm. The salawats on Sayyidina Muhammad and lots of lots of salawats because it brings the presence of Prophet and the nazar of Prophet That the most you do is salawats, make istighfar so that Allah grant you forgiveness. Because every time we say, Astaghfirullah al-Azeem wa tubu ilayh, Allah is granting Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. But if you're asking me for forgiveness, I'm granting you in the name of the most compassionate and most merciful and forgiving. So istighfar and salawats, istighfar is like the shower, washing, 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 washing and salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad is the beautific fragrance that fragrances our body, our tongue, our mouth, our heart, our entire being inshaAllah. Then the meditations, the zikrs, everything else inshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, what is the reality of the so-called gods of Egypt? Are they part of the believer jinn nation or rebellious in nature? It seems like hidden beneath a lot of occult and mystery traditions they feature. Yeah, the, <clears throat> the pharaonic magic was the, the pinnacle of magic, right? So the pharaonic magic and their sorcerers were the, the pinnacle of, of the magicians and the use of jinn and what they call aliens and all of these nefarious creatures, we'll just call them jinn. And that's why their images of a head with this and that. If anyone has, has dealt with the jinn world, they, they have… their fashion is their desire. It could be a, a cow with a cat's head walking because they're not limited by physicality. Their fashion is however they want to appear, similar to what you see on their hieroglyphics that there is a falcon and then this and has bodies mixed with this animal, with this creature, it's like a fashion statement for them. Their use of sorcery and magic was very high level magic and sorcery they were using. And as a result these pharaonic systems and this Egyptian magic is the most severe. And they are the ones governing these elites and their magic is still used and that's why they call pharaonic bloodlines. The pharaonic bloodlines is that those nations their life is thousands of years, not our seventy years. When they make a contract with these families, these contracts go back thousands of years and they say generational connection to those people. One physical dies then that nefarious being will go into the next one, to the heir of that one, to the heir of the next one and they operate through their physicalities all the wealth and influence of those individuals. As a result they control the whole hierarchy of this dunya. So they're, they're the ones who control these organizations and their, their magic is the one that is trying to, to do everything. But SubhanAllah, Allah there's nothing compared unto Allah and that Allah's might and majesty beyond imagination. And the tariqahs and the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad is supreme. The power that, that emanate from the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad with the perfection of character, the good character, the love, the humility then that's the point is that if, you, if you're going to take from the people whom think they're one, what did Allah do to Pharaoh? And that's why the expressions from Nabi Musa are very important. The examples, why Allah throughout Qur'an is giving us the Pharaonic symbol, saying that Nabi Musa was going to one of these big Pharaohs and all their sorcery and kept telling them, believe in Allah and they wouldn't. And then opens up for us the reality of punishment. It wasn't for Nabi Musa to start fighting him, you know, take his cane and start hitting him. 
he just stepped away and then Allah said, I'll punish him and put nine different scourges and punishments upon him and his people and anybody who was associated with that. There was the hikmah of punishment to lower him, to lower him, to lower him but in the face of all their magic they had no power with Allah And then Allah even described that in their sorcery and in their majlis of sorcery Allah had His own servants monitoring what they're doing and countering their activities. And that was a, a great lesson in humility. So when they challenged Nabi Musa come and let's battle our magic and Sayyidina Musa came to their association, shortened story of it and through his asa they asked Sayyidina Musa you toss your cane or we toss our cane. They gave a ihtiram and a respect to the Prophet of Allah and asked, should you throw or we throw? As a result of that question Allah granted their hearts to believe and Nabi Musa said, I'll go first, they'll throw. If he threw first or they threw first and then Nabi Musa threw his staff like a dragon it came and ate all their magic. But because of their good manners Allah opened their hearts to believe and they were astonished at His reality and said, this is real, ours is magic and we submit, La ilaha illallah Musa Rasulullah and they accepted. And that's when Pharaoh became angry that, who gave you permission to accept? <laughs> but for us to understand that same Pharaonic magic and power is nothing in comparison to when Allah want to open what Allah opens. So Allah's Allah's opening is unimaginable. That's why we said the sunnah and the majestic sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad is not something imaginable. If Nabi Musa has a cane, it was from Prophet his cane has no power. He had to ask from the staff of Prophet to give him from his holy sunnah because all power emanates from the hand of Prophet So means the staff that Nabi Musa was using was a gift from Prophet because the Risalat is Sayyidina Muhammad The Sunnah is from Prophet So with that staff it ate their magic. That's what the awliya teach is then with this staff is like a dragon out on the street. People don't understand it, people don't see it but the shayateen they understand that this, this is not magic, these people they have a power from Divinely Presence and when they carry the majestic sunnah it's like a dragon is attached to their cane that is emanating all around them. And that's to, to give the honour to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad That's how Allah magnifies and glorifies the love and the reality of Prophet that anyone with intention of reviving the holy sunnah of Prophet that they, they're holding immense power within their hands and it's to the unseen very fierce energies, very fierce energies. And this is, this is the, the whole system of why to train and to reach towards this love and to reach towards these realities and they're nothing in comparison to whatever this dunya is trying to establish. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ili sharaf al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 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 I didn't see him today. Okay. Well, all you have to do to declare your, sh- your shahada is, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّا مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ إِلَى شَرَفَ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ وَعَلَيْهِ وَأَصْحَابِهِ كِرَامٍ وَلَمْ يُشَيْهِنَا فِي تَرِيقَةَ نَشْبَنْدِيَّةَ الْعَلِيَّةَ وَسَائِرُ وَسَادَّتِنَا مُسْتَدَقِّنَا الْفَاتِحَةَ